So do you wanna know why your views graph looks like this when you make YouTube shorts? Well, this is a question that I've had for a while since I've started making shorts on this channel and my second channel. I see this across all of my videos. You get this flat line and then all of a sudden it takes off and then it flat lines again. And there's no clear explanation why, but I finally figured it out. So in this video, I'm gonna explain why YouTube shorts views look like this but also, I'm gonna show you some techniques that I personally have been using that have really helped my shorts grow. And last month alone, I gained over 130,000 subscribers and got tens of millions of views. All right, so let's get into it. Now, this video is not a sponsored video, but this channel is supported by those of you who buy my LUTs and my courses over on the Creator Film School. And so if you're interested in either of those, I'll put a link down below in the description so you could check them out after you finish watching this video. So on my channel here, I've done a bunch of shorts. Nothing's really taken off that well. However, starting February 1st, I started doing daily shorts on my second channel and the views have skyrocketed. And that channel is a completely different style of channel than this channel. It's all based around adventure stories. And there's some weird patterns that I've noticed when I've been making my shorts. And there's some techniques that I've been using that just seem to work. So first, let's go over this views pattern because I hear it again and again. Creators are like, why do my views skyrocket and then stop? So last week I was at Sony's creator camp and the YouTube liaison, Rene Ritchie, did a talk and he was talking about shorts because all the creators there have a lot of questions when it comes to shorts. But one of the things that he mentioned was why we're seeing this pattern. And it's just like a light bulb moment for me. So when you first upload a video to YouTube, whether it's a short, long form, whatever, YouTube's gonna test that video with the people who are currently engaged so that the algorithm can see is there viewers that are gonna wanna watch this content. And there's a big misconception around YouTube in general. A lot of creators say that the algorithm finds an audience for your video, but reality, it's the opposite. YouTube is constantly thinking about the viewer and trying to find videos that a viewer wants to watch. This is why subs are not as important in YouTube anymore, and it really comes down to viewer satisfaction. And so when you upload a video, YouTube's first gonna test that with your inner circle, the people who are already engaging with your content or who have watched a video recently. And so based on that data, if YouTube sees good metrics, like high watch time, click-through rate, all that, well then YouTube's gonna find similar audiences that would also be interested in your content. It's kind of just a quick overview of how YouTube works in general. So why do we see this weird bell curve spike and then flatline? Well, it has to do with that information gathering stage when you upload a video to YouTube. So on a normal long form video, like the video you're watching right now, YouTube can put this in front of people with your thumbnail and your title. So you go to your home screen, you go to suggested, you go to the search tab, all those places, your video can be viewed and someone might decide to click on it or not. And when that video is surfaced in front of a viewer in this way where you're just seeing title and thumbnail, that's called an impression. So you're gonna get a certain level of impressions when you upload a video because the algorithm is gonna look for an audience that might be interested in that video that you uploaded. And as I said a little bit ago, they're gonna test the people who are actively engaged with your content to begin with. If you made a video around shorts, like I did, that got 100,000 views, well, this video is gonna be surfaced in front of a lot of the people that watch that video because they're watching that video right now. It's my highest performing video at the moment. So this video, since it's a similar topic, there's a good chance that people will click on it because the viewer who watches that video is also probably interested in this video. But when that video is surfaced up, that's called an impression. Now, if you dig into the back end of your analytics for your shorts, you'll notice that there are no impressions. And that's because shorts are brought in front of a viewer differently. Shorts are on the short shelf and they're just shown to the viewer and the viewer can decide to swipe away or keep watching. But there's no metric for quote unquote impressions because there's no title thumbnail that's being placed in front of the viewer. But the vast majority of how shorts are consumed are on the shorts shelf. So instead of relying on title and thumbnail to see if a viewer clicks on your video, what the algorithm does is it puts your video into the short shelf and it sees how an audience responds to that video. So instead of getting impressions, what you're getting is views. And in this test phase is when you see this rocket ship of views. 
So you'll see this huge spike, 1,000 views, 2,000 views, whatever the spike is, and then the flat line. Because what the algorithm is doing is testing your video with an audience to see how they react. And based on that data, if there is audiences that the algorithm sees would be interested in your video, then it will continue to serve it out to more of those audiences. So a lot of times what you'll see is a spike, a flat line, maybe another spike, and then all of a sudden you'll start seeing this gradual graph going up. And what happens is that the algorithm has found an audience for your content and is now sharing that to more people like the audience for that content. And one of the things that Renee Ritchie told me when I was at camera camp is that it's like a spark. So you wanna think of videos like a spark. And so if it finds an audience, that spark ignites and it will light off a firework. And your goal is to be New Year's Eve and fireworks going off all around the globe and just constantly just boom, 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 boom. But sometimes it'll just be like a firecracker. It'll just be a quick boom, done, lost the audience. But sometimes it'll be a big display of fireworks for a few days and then it will get less views. YouTube is gonna consistently test audiences and find content for those audiences. So you might have videos that have been sitting on your channel for 500 days and then they take off. I've had that happen to me. And that's kind of the beauty of YouTube, how YouTube works and why it's so different than other platforms out there because there is more of this opportunity for your content to perform year after year after year. And also that even works on shorts. Shorts could take off later. They don't have to take off immediately. But that weird flat line that you see at the beginning of your videos, well, it's because there's no impressions. So YouTube has to put it out into viewers as a view, and that's why you're seeing that initial boom and then flatline. So on my second channel, I found a lot of success with shorts in the last few months, and I've been getting tens of millions of views, and I got over 100,000 subscribers in one month. So let me give you some tips that have worked for me. Now, these aren't the only way to do shorts, and one of the things that I've noticed on YouTube recently is there's a lot of creators out there teaching how to do shorts, but then you go and look at their content and they don't really have shorts that are performing that well. So be careful who you're listening to when it comes to advice on how to do your shorts because there's a lot of information out there, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's good information. So I'm just gonna give you five tips that actually have worked for me and the things that I've been doing consistently, kind of the formula that I've made for my second channel. And these may or may not work for you, but they're a good starting point, a good place to try. Now, the first thing that I'm doing is that I'm adding a voiceover for everything that I'm doing. And this is something that I just produce in my office. I do a voiceover that goes from the beginning to the end, and I just let it run through the entire thing. This way, there's no downtime, there's no slow moments, and it just keeps the story progressing forward. And a lot of times I'll have the footage already and the story in mind, and then I'll create a separate voiceover that's gonna fit a 20 to 30 to 40 second style video. And so that's all done afterwards when I sit down at my computer and I'm ready to start editing. While I was looking around Google Earth, I found this odd square. So I decided to climb a mountain and figure out what it was. The climb was not easy. Within minutes, you're on an intense vertical climb that rises straight out of Los Angeles. And in the distance, you can see downtown. When we got to the top, we found this big slab of concrete, but no indication of what it is or why it's here. There's some radio towers in the distance, so it probably has something to do with those. However, from this point, you have an epic view of the city. I lived in Los Angeles for years and never knew that this existed. The best part about exploring is finding unexpected places on your adventures. Now, tip number two, put text on screen. This has worked for me, and I've tried a bunch of different ways with text on screen, whether it's one word, three words, you know, a quick little sentence. I haven't really figured out exact formula that performs better than others because I've had shorts perform well that are multiple words on screen and I've had some perform well that are just single word on screen. So, so far, I don't know what's better, but I found that having the text on screen is just super helpful because there's a lot of people viewing shorts without sound on. I even find myself watching a lot of shorts without sound on. And when someone has text on screen, I'll sit there and watch it. But if there's no text on screen and it's not instantly grabbing my attention just from the visuals, well, I swipe away. So having that text on screen is just an added thing to keep your viewer watching. And also for those people who aren't actually listening to it, which there's probably a, a big range of people who watch without the sound on.
Would you hike on an active volcano? I was in Hawaii with my wife and the volcano was erupting. So we rented bikes and rode as close as possible. We're going all the way to where that's spewing out. It's four miles from here. From there, we had to hike to see the flow. It was a wild experience walking over this landscape and all you could see was black rock in every direction. It makes it feel like you're on another planet. As the sun set over the horizon, we got to watch the lava flow right into the ocean. Tip number three, is get your viewer to comment. And so a lot of the ways that I do this is by asking questions, like actually engaging with the people on the other side of the camera. So at the end of the video or even the beginning of the video, I'll ask a question. Do you think X? What do you think about this? What are your thoughts around this? Something that gets the viewer to actually respond and write a comment. Because a lot of times when someone's commenting, their video's looping in the background. And with shorts, you want them to be higher view percentage, 80, 90, 100%. Some of my best performing shorts are at 120% average view percentage. That's because people are watching them multiple times and they're commenting and everything else. So think of ways that you could get your video to loop and ask a question at the end or the beginning and that will get that average view percentage up and that could help. But I've also had videos that have a higher average view percentage and don't necessarily take off the same way as other videos. So it's there's no guarantee that a high average view percentage means that the video is going to take off, but it is just one of those indicators that's going to help the algorithm say that, oh, this is a good video and it should be sent out to more audiences like the ones that are watching it because they've obviously stuck around and watched this video multiple times. So does this make sense to you? Do you consider this art? Deep in the desert of California, a group of artists create art installations called Desert X. The first is a series of chain link fences meant to emphasize that nothing is static and everything is in a state of flux. The second is a giant game board and by scanning QR codes, you, the player, see a new way of understanding the landscape. And the third is a massive black structure that you can climb or walk through, which is meant to connect the memory of water in the body and the memory of water in the desert. Now, number four is a big one. Probably should have put this at number one, but it's that you want to tell a story. At least that's what I've been doing and it works well. And obviously story format works because stories are inherent in the human experience. And so to tell a story in a short, you can only do so much. It has to be kind of quick, but you can set up what you're trying to do, go on the journey, and then have some sort of reveal at the end. One of the formats that's worked very well for me is that I found this on Google Earth and then I went to go explore and see what it was. And that format has an inherent story built in, has a setup that piques some curiosity or interest. There's the journey of what happened along the way. And sometimes I'll include some challenges that came up during that journey. So like my camera fell over, my lens broke, or the boat stopped and we had to paddle. Just like something that happened that pushed me away from being able to see what's at the end of the journey. And then the reveal is what do you actually find? So reframing an experience in a story format is gonna make it more engaging and keep your viewer watching because they wanna see what happens at the end. So how can you infuse the story format into the videos that you're making? While I was looking around Alaska on Google Earth, I was shown this glacier that falls into the ocean. So I decided I wanted to fly my drone over it. I got the opportunity to work with DJI on the release of a new drone. So I traveled from California to Alaska to meet up with a buddy who could take me to this location. The only problem is there's no road to it. So first we had to drive to a small town called Whittier to find a boat. And as soon as we got there, the weather took a turn for the worse. We got on the water and traveled a few hours from this town to the end of Blackstone Bay. And once there, we couldn't get close to the glacier. So we took a dinghy to shore but then the motor broke, so we ended up having to paddle. And just as we got to shore, the clouds opened up and we had a beautiful scene to film. So I took out the new unreleased drone and started it up before realizing that it doesn't work. And my fifth tip for you is don't overthink it. Create shorts, make it kind of quick, post them, see what works and see what doesn't work, and just keep going through the process. I think one of the biggest things that is gonna hurt you as a creator is that you're getting hung up too much on the little details. When I was at camera camp last week, I heard a lot of little tips and tricks when it comes to shorts, like things you do with text and things that you could do with descriptions and tags and all of this stuff that personally, I don't think matters that much. The reality is the concept and the idea is the most important. And then on top of that, it's telling it in a way that keeps the viewer watching to the end. And so I think the most important thing when it comes to shorts is just creating interesting stories. And the way you get good at telling stories is by telling more stories. And so this is a great way to get in that habit of just telling short form stories and just putting out more content. 
Shorts are the lowest barrier to entry. You don't need to deal with thumbnails. You don't need to deal with crazy titles. You don't have to worry about your descriptions, your tags, any of that. All you need to do is make a quick video that's 20 to 40 seconds and then upload it, see what happens, make another short. And this is why I've challenged myself to do 100 shorts in 100 days. I'm currently at day like 70 and it's been going pretty well. But if you wanna see how I jump started my channel doing 30 days of shorts, then make sure you check out this video right here. It goes through all of my data and what I've seen making shorts consistently on a channel that was only getting like 10 to 20 views a day. I'll see you over there.